I'm excited about what God is doing, and I, <laughs> a little weak this morning, I, I've, uh, it's coming off a four-day fast, I, I came off last night, uh, normally the fourth and fifth day of an extended fast are your moments of weakness, and I'm still feeling that this morning. <laughs> But what's important is the presence of God. And I know you came here today to hear a word from the Lord and to sense his presence. And that's what we want to press into. And, and uh, we're going to share this message of after I'll sit in the chair. <laughs> Last night I couldn't walk from the living room to the kitchen <laughs> without stopping and and resting, and, and uh, so I thought, you know, I better take some nourishment for tomorrow. <laughs> so uh, why don't I talk today about heavenly places? Uh, the Old Testament talks about high places, and a high place was a place of spiritual activity. And in, in all, many places in the Old Testament, you'll see where they talk about the high places. Now, sometimes these high places were demonic places of idols, and uh, a demonic worship, and sometimes it was a place where people went to worship God. And many things that happened in the Old Testament, Moses goes on the mountaintop to spend time with God because the high place was a place recognized where there's spiritual activity. And uh, Abraham took Jacob up on the mountain to, to do a sacrifice as, as well. And so in the Old Testament, the high place was a place of spiritual significance. And we find here in, in Deuteronomy chapter 12, it says here, when you drive out the nations, now God told the nation of Israel, when you go into the land that I've promised you, it's inhabited already with pagans. He says, I want you to go in there and take the land and wipe them out. And he says, when you drive out the nations that live there, you must destroy all the places where they worship their gods, high on the mountains, up on the hills, up on the high places is where they had, they had their, their places of worship. And, and, uh, and he goes on, he says, break down their altars and smash their sacred pillars, burn their Asherah poles and cut down their carved idols, completely erase the names of their gods. Now, this is important. When you receive Jesus Christ in your life as well, you need to, to do away with all the past evil, the, the influence of the demonic realm in your life. You need to erase it, get it out of your life. Let Jesus set you free from it. All the, the thought process of jealousy and, and lying and, and such even, you need to renew your mind and get it out of your life. If you want to move on in God and grow in God, you've got to remove the hindrances. And so it's all of our responsibilities. I'm responsible for my life to remove the hindrances from my life, from my past, so that God can move mightily within my life. Paul talks about this in Ephesians. He talks about the high places of God. You know, uh, we look at high places. Uh, Church steeples, when our nation was being founded, normally you'd go into a community, the highest place in a, a community was a church steeple. Because we were declaring in that community, God rules this place. Then as, as things progressed, we got skyscrapers. <laughs> All of a sudden, the church steeple was no longer the highest place in the community. But I thought, you know what, it'd be wonderful if it, in the skyscraper, the top floor would be a chapel. We're making a statement in our nation, God rules this place. God's blessing is on this place. You've heard the song of friends in high places. <laughs> it means a, a friend of influence and power. Well, we have a, a friend in a high place. He influences our life and releases his power in our life, and it's Jesus. So Paul talks about heavenly places in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms. 
because we are united with Christ. Spiritual blessings in the heavenly realms. Listen, when you got born again, all of a sudden, a spir- you, you entered into a sp- spiritual place, a high place, a heavenly place in God. It gave you direct access to heaven. And so if you're here today and you're born again, you, you have access to the heavenly place. Salvation opened that door for you. Now, it's up to you to determine how much of your life you're going to live from the heavenly place. It's up to you to determine how much influence God's going to have in your life. You have access now to the authority and the power of God. You have access to the spiritual blessings in heavenly places. God wants to release them in your life. You need to surrender and humble yourself before the Lord. Deal with issues in your life that are hindering that from happening and enter into the spiritual blessings God has for you. It's got to be a a desire of your heart. And I want to talk about operating in spiritually high places uh, and and how we do that. You know, uh, we had great worship this morning because we moved in and we allowed the heavenly place flow through us. And when we do that, the anointing of God is released in the house. You can sit in this church and just sing words and not enter into the heavenly place. Or you can enter in with a desire of your heart. I want to enter in, God. I want to hear from you today, God. And in, in our bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit. First Corinthians says, don't you realize that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and has given, was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself, for God brought, bought you with a high price. So you must honor God with your body. This body houses the presence of the Lord, and this body experiences spiritual blessings in heavenly places. And if you're not experiencing spiritual blessings from the heavenly place, humble yourself, yield yourself to the Lord. You and God need to have a little encounter, a little counseling session, because God wants to release it in your life. Jesus paid that, that it would be released in your life. He gave his life. He suffered on the cross that you would experience spiritual blessings. And for you to hold back and not enter into it is a mockery to Jesus. And so I say, here I am, Lord, move in me. Matthew 5, 6 says that, The hungry shall be filled. The hungry. You can come to this church, and if you're not spiritually hungry, if if you say, I don't really care if, you know, uh, about the presence of God, or I'm just not with it today, you can sit through this whole service and never enter into the heavenly place and just hear words and leave. Or you can enter in and say, God, I'm hungry for you. I bless you today. I honor you today. I give my life to you today. And I enter into that spiritual place. You see, you don't casually get there. You don't sit back and say, well, let's see what God's going to do today. As if God's got to prove himself to us. As if God's got to stir me up. Psalm says, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. He was commanding his soul. Soul, you're going to bless. Mind and emotions, you're going to bless the Lord today. It was an act of his will. He gave direction to his life. Enter into the things of the Lord. And that's a daily activity. I enter into the presence of God. I allow God to direct my life and shape me. Secondly, we enter in with an attitude of praise and thanksgiving. Psalms 100 says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name, for the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever, and his faithfulness continues to each generation. So we enter, and that's why we sing songs at the beginning, because we want to enter into the heavenly place together. 
And there's something about entering into the heavenly place as a family, as a church. You, you can do it in your home, and you should. And that's a wonderful time, you and God one-on-one. -on -one. But there is something about getting together as a group. It's like it, it intensifies the anointing. And, 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 and you enter into this glorious time in the presence of the Lord. But we enter with an attitude and with praise and worship. You know, you don't enter in, well, you know, God had a bad week, really tired, don't feel like worshiping you today, so I, here I am, <laughs> you know. David said, offer the sacrifice of praise. Sometimes, yeah, it takes a special human effort. But God says, do it. Don't be ruled by your emotions and your stinking thinking. Let the presence and power and the mind of Christ rule your life. And so you, you enter in, even when you're feeling not motivated to. I'm not psyched up today to do that, God. Well, tough. Do it anyway. You go to work when you don't feel like it, right? Well, some people do. Those that keep jobs do. <laughs> So we don't, we don't restrict our functioning on the job and in life by your feelings. Your feelings are like the weather. They're going to change on you. Thirdly, praise and worship from... Oh, I'm, going to, I'm, I'm going to move and do that one last. Let's go to number four. Prayer is enhanced. When you're in the heavenly place, that's the time to pray. And I'll, I'll sit at home and I'll put on worship music. And I'll just sit and listen. No. And I can enter into that, a heavenly place by doing that. But as I do that, when I sense the Spirit of God start to speak to me, then I give voice to it. And I declare it. Prayer is voice activated. And prayer is listening. It's both. But you need to realize I've got to give voice to that which God releases in me. Number one, the devil needs to hear you speak the word of the Lord. He needs to hear you speak the revelation that God gave you. The devil's not a mind reader. He doesn't know. God's a mind reader. He knows. But when God releases a revelation and an inspiration to you, you give, you give word to it and declare it. And as you do, it gains power in your life, and it pushes back the forces of darkness from hindering that from becoming a reality to you. And so we give voice to the word of the Lord. When we're in the, the high place and that heavenly place and praying to God, we don't pray the problem. Oh, God, I'm really depressed today. God, I've had a rough week. Oh, God, I'm really miserable. Oh, God, oh, and whine and complain to God. Go ahead and do that, and then move into the heavenly place. Your whining won't get you into the heavenly place. But your surrender in a humble heart with a strong desire will get you to the heavenly place. And so many times Christians pray the problem or they, they, they just pray out of their natural mind. Get to the heavenly place. Get the mind of Christ. Get what God thinks about your situation and then declare it. So being in the heavenly place enhances prayer. We go to the heavenly place and we stay there until we get a revelation from God that we can release into our situation and our problem. Fifth thing is faith is established in the secret place. Romans 10, 17 says that faith cometh by hearing the word of the Lord. Hearing the revelation of God releases faith in your life. You can humanly and naturally try to concoct faith, but I'm going to tell you something. When the Spirit of God speaks to your, your life, all of a sudden, whoa, this is good. I believe now. I believe. God is able. God just released victory into my life. 
He just released direction into my life. And faith just naturally grows out of that. Faith operates by the revelation of the Lord. Sixth point is that place is a, uh, the heavenly place is a place of spiritual warfare. You're going to fight the devil. You've got to fight him from there. Your, your good intentions or your anger against the devil does not bother him a bit. In fact, you can come to church and, and sit through a service, and, and the devil doesn't mind that a bit. But if you'll connect into the heavenly places and allow the Spirit of God to start moving and flowing in your life, he don't like that. And we come against the devil with the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. When I'm in the heavenly place, I start releasing the word of God. I say, devil, take this. You've pushed on me this way. I'm pushing back. And it comes from the heavenly place. Good intentions don't beat the devil. But the power of Jesus will. And the power of Jesus is released in the heavenly place. And a lot of Christians don't understand this. And, and, and they're beat up, or they're wondering, why doesn't God care, and where is God? And, and, and their perspective of God is, 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 is greatly damaged because they're not operating from the heavenly place where the spiritual blessings are. The spiritual blessings are going to come to you through that heavenly place, that, that place in you where the Holy Spirit is. Your heavenly place is in you. And as you allow the Spirit of God to operate in you, it lifts you even to higher places. And all of a sudden, you feel the victory. You feel like, I'm going to make it. God is with me. It's just not a thought I have, but I'm really experiencing it. Yes, I'm empowered by the Holy Spirit. Number seven, it reveals who God is. Knowing God comes through the Holy Spirit and His Word. And there's a lot of people in our culture in America today that don't know God. They know about God. They know some scripture. They might belong to a church and they're very religious. But they don't know about the heavenly places. They don't know about yielding to the Holy Spirit and allowing the Holy Spirit to work in their life. Now we have, we have generations of people that they want to shape God to be what they think called humanism. And in humanism, I am a God unto myself. What I think is right for me is right for me, and what somebody else thinks is right for them is right for them, and there's confusion in the land. And that's what we have in America today. We have confusion. And, 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 and people don't understand. They're blinded. You need to go to the heavenly place and let God define who he is to you. Don't let your culture define it. Don't let our government define who God is to you. You go into the heavenly place and let God define himself to you. So that you know from the man himself who he is. And then the last point is point number three. <laughs> I shifted my points. Praise and worship from the heavenly place. Psalms 149. We're going to look at this and then we're going to have uh, a video I want us to watch and then our worship team is going to come back up. Psalms 149 says, Sing uh, to the Lord a new song. Sing his praises in the assembly of the faithful. Singing a new song to the Lord is something fresh from your heart. It, it's, and as you sing fresh from your heart, you can sing a song that you already know. A lot of the songs we sang this morning, we know them. But if, if, if I sing those songs from a heart of appreciation and love for God, I can sing them today, and it's fresh, and it blesses the Lord, and it blesses me. I can sing the same song tomorrow if I do it from a heart 
that's humble before the Lord and appreciative to the Lord, it's a new song. It's fresh to the Lord. Him and I are interacting and relating. I want you to watch this video. It's an, also an example of, of what a new song is. A new song is a creative flow you from your heart. Here. Listen. Oh, you're here, Lord. Here in your power. Yes, yes. I know you are here. Precious Holy Spirit. I know you are here. Here in your glory. Precious Holy Spirit, I know you are here, flowing like a river, I know you are here, sweet Holy Spirit, I know you have come tonight, you are here to bring revival. Precious Holy Spirit, I know you are here, blazing holy fire, I know you are here, precious and sweet Holy Spirit, you are the God of the breakthrough, and you are here, you are here to take us higher. Precious Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, carry me, oh, carry me, Holy Spirit, yes. carry me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise from the heavenly place comes from the heart. And many times it's something you've never sung before, it just flows from you. God loves that. It's the heavenly place. The Holy Spirit will guide you in how to worship the Lord, how to bless Jesus. So we learn to worship from our spirit, and the Holy Spirit shows us. It's a spiritual endeavor and activity. It's an expression of appreciation from our heart to the Lord. And there's times that I'll put, I'll put like this on at home in the presence of the Lord. Say, God, I love you. I know you're here. Listen, God is here. No matter what your situation is, he cares. And he wants to be involved in helping you. You need to let him. There's times when I'll speak in tongues. In fact, I probably pray in tongues more than I do English. And I'll sing in tongues. In the future here, I want to talk about tongues and, and the value of it. Listen. As we enter into what we believe is the end times and where sin abounds, listen, God's grace much more abounds. But we can't continue to stay at the level we're at and, and defeat the abounding of sin today. We as a church need to rise to other levels in God. So God sings his song in and through us, and we release it. It's the sound of heaven. When we gather here on a Sunday morning and we start worshiping and praising God, yes. it's a sound that comes back from heaven to us. We sow into the heavens and praise and worship from the heavenly place, and God sows into our lives from that heavenly place. So we give voice to the words that we sing. Let's stand together. We're going to play this video a minute or two of it again, and let's press into that, and then our worship team is going to lead us. 
if you're here today and you need prayer, feel free to come forward. We want to pray for you. We want to help you. God wants to help you. We're just a vessel. But our church services need to come from the heavenly place. Let's play this video and let's pray. I know you are here, here in your power. I know you are here, precious Holy Spirit. I know you are here, here in your glory. I know you are here. Precious Holy Spirit, I know you are here, flowing like a river, I know you are here, sweet Holy Spirit, I know you have come tonight, you are here to bring revival. I know you are here, precious Holy Spirit, I know you are here, blazing holy fire, I know you are here, precious and sweet Holy Spirit, you are the God of the breakthrough, and you are here, you are here to take us higher. I know you are here, precious Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, carry me, oh, carry me, Holy Spirit, carry me. Sweet Holy Spirit, tonight we ask that you carry us on the wings of eagles. Let us soar. In realms of glory, let us experience the glory and the power of God. You are the power of the Most High. Overshadow us tonight. Overshadow your people. Holy Spirit, carry me. you need prayer, feel free to come up. Otherwise, let's continue just to worship the Lord today.